Welcome to the Kind of Nerdy Girls podcast. Fandom. Fun. Funny. All right, kids, we're so excited for PopCon getting closer and closer. Uh, tickets are at popcon.us, and we've got over 25 celebrities coming. Uh, Paranormal Crossroad, my TV show, going to be uh, doing our show live in front of a studio audience, and you can be there Friday, July 9th. You can get those tickets at popcon.us. And joining me now, uh, one of the uh, over 25 celebrities who will be spending the weekend in Indianapolis at PopCon from the legendary, the iconic, the amazing, the Hall of Fame band, The Ramones, CJ Ramon called in to chat about coming to PopCon. Of course, the first question I had to ask him is, have you even been to a con before? You know, cons aren't aren't new for me because I went to several of them with Johnny, you know, horror cons and, and, and whatnot. So it was just funny to be on the other side of the table. That yeah. Was- yeah, so horror cons. What are your what are your interests in 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 horror flicks? Oh boy, uh, so yeah, I mean, of course, my age, right? I grew up in in the in the seventies. I really got into horror stuff when I was uh, when I was a kid, and uh, you know, of course, I loved all the the monster movies and everything. But I really liked the Hammer films, so vampires and especially the the vampire gals and the victorian dresses with the push-up oh yeah <laughs> wow. when i was a kid i was like i think between the the hammer films and i dream a genie i think that was probably my my sexual awakening <laughs> but uh, yeah but i mean I've, I've always loved horror films and i saw all the classic in the theater you know i was lucky enough mm-hmm. to see everything from and sci-fi everything from like you know friday the 13th and and halloween and like all the originals in the theater aliens i saw in the theater jaws i saw in the theater you know i saw like the real real classics and of course before that like i said you know uh, in New York, we always had uh, there was a, a, uh, a show on called the 4:30 movie. It was 4:30 in the afternoon, and they would have Monster Week where they would show nothing but monster movies and stuff. Oh, like that. Cool. And we didn't have on demand. We didn't, you know, you know, if you want to see a movie again, you had to go to the theater. And if it was done in the theater, you had to wait till it came, you know, onto TV. Much as pre VHS, pre Betamax, pre everything. But uh, yeah, that's that was. Horror and sci-fi was, they were always my favorites. Oh, well, let's talk a little bit about sci-fi because PopCon covers it, covers all of pop culture, which is part of the reason that it fits in so well. And we're so excited that that you are coming to PopCon and that we are going to be able to celebrate the, you know, the the legendary music of the of the Ramones while you are here with us. But we've got, you know, a lot of fans who are also coming to this convention for the sci-fi side of things. So what's your jam? Are you into are you Star Wars, Star Trek? What's your thing? Yeah, I mean, I saw Star Wars in the theater. You know, I watched the original Star Trek. (laughs) Yeah. Um, (laughs) uh, But, like, if I had to pick one one series of movies that I really love, it's Alien has always been my my go-to. And, I I mean, I I even, you know, I even like Prometheus and... (laughs) Um, Uh (laughs) Uh-oh. That's that's such a bad reaction from people, but I really, I really liked it. I really liked the movie. I thought it was great. But the, but Alien always been my favorite. The, the idea of a, a, a female hero was just, I thought that was just the coolest thing. I thought that was just the coolest thing, you know, she's the one who fights and survives and goes on to, you know, to fight the alien another day but you know and Sigourney Weaver in, in that role was just unbelievable like it really so <laughs> I gotta give you a background so Joan of Arc has always been one of my favorites from history right mm-hmm. you know young girl you know has visions gets a, gets an audience with the king says I'm going to you know end this hundred years war and you're going to get put on the throne and you know whatever she was when it happened, you know, she was a teenage, late teens. Uh, 
that story is just stuck in my head so hard from when I first I went to Catholic school as a kid. Me stuck too. in my head. <laughs> All right. Yeah. And I just, so, you know, I just always love the idea of a female hero. It's so outside the box on everything, you know, especially back then when women were property of their husbands and all that kind of stuff. Yes. And so you have this teenage girl who's like, I'm going to fix all of this stuff. I'm going to make it happen. So, you know, with, with that in my background, I think Ripley was just like, Boom, like the realization of all the coolest things that yes. any you know heroine hero could possibly um pull off. And and that and that movie just it became my favorite. I mean, I have a huge alien tattoo on my chest. I have another one on my arm. I wow. you know, instantly became a huge fan of eight uh of H. R. Geyer and and I've you know got all his books and I, I really just kind of dove into whole th the whole thing. I even had the really cool alien uh, doll, the the posable figure, I, which I sold a long time ago. But I mean, I really just got so into it, and it, and to you know to learn the the backstories and you know each movie how it just got more and more intense. It's, the second one is probably my favorite one, but yeah, just such a cool cool thing you know and yeah but i gotta say you know it's you know there have been kind of things that were really great and some things that were like eh, maybe they could have left that out they could have changed it you know mm -hmm. um, complaints about you know not enough alien creature or you know too much animated alien creature and not enough guy in the suit type stuff but uh, i mean through it all i i've loved the whole series i really do and uh, i you know probably alien and jaws and The Exorcist were probably the three big ones for me. They were like the three, like, boom. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That, those are good ones, too. <laughs> movie going experience, you know. Do you have any, is there anything more recently that has caught your attention? Or do you kind of stick with the classics? I I'm definitely a fan of the classics. I mean, huge fan of the classics. But, you know, there's there's a couple of, there's one director, Terrence Malick, who doesn't do horror. You know, he's, mm -hmm. he's, but he's, he's one, like one of my favorite directors, but he's, his movies, I, I, I watch a lot. But I mean, I'm all over the place when it comes to the genres too. You know, I love all the, the military movies and, 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 you know, all the, all the just, real real intense dramas and stuff i pretty much watch i watch a pretty wide variety of stuff but most of the times when i sit down and pull something up on demand it is classic you know it's pretty i think oh, yeah. what did i watch the other day i just watched something the other day and it was prometheus <laughs> <laughs> You know, I feel like we kind of come from the same same place when it comes to our entertainment. I'm like, you know what? Did I have a good time for those couple of hours? Was I entertained? I'm then I'm good with it. I don't want to look too far into things and say, well, you know, maybe that plot line wasn't quite what it should have been. Or, you know, I I try to just take it for, you know what? I couldn't make something this entertaining and and, and you did. So <laughs> thank you. <laughs> and I got to say, like, as far as horror movies go now, mm -hmm. like they have done, they have done some pretty, pretty interesting stuff. You know, there's been some, some releases in the last 10 years or so anyway, that, that I felt like, yeah, eh, that's, you know, at least the, the, they're getting outside of the the normal formulas for horror movies, slasher movies, and whatnot. But I, yeah, I'm I'm just uh, I have this theory, right? So I, it's it's not even my own theory. I mean, I think it's everyone probably knows it. But there's certain things that you, certain music you listen to, and certain movies you see at certain times in your life that just have such a strong effect on you that anytime you listen to that song or you watch that movie, it's like you instantly get pulled back in, into your childhood. You know, you instantly get pulled back into that time period where you first heard it or you first saw it. I mean, how, how many, I know everyone has songs. That song comes on the radio and you can remember when you first heard it, you know, whether it was, you know, kissing a girl or a boy for the first time, or, you know, you, you know, first time of like being out on your own or something like songs that you can just that are like the, 
the yeah. sound back to your life, you know. But for me, movies are the same thing. You know, I remember going to see Jaws in, in the theater the first time I went to a theater. And it was, I think it was Jaws and Orca. Wow. It was both that of them together. Them? <laughs> but they were out at the same time. This might have been after Jaws was out for a while. But I went to see one time they had Jaws and Orca playing together. And it was just like. So traumatizing. Yeah. You know what I mean? Oh, you- I get it. I the first movie I saw in theaters was Empire Strikes Back. And oh, that, you know, I mean, that like changed me. I mean, I've got look picture up here. I'm not a weather person, is with with Carrie Fisher from a con. And oh, that's cool. I mean, CJ had to leave the room for a second because I was actually working the con and I was working her room. And I'm like, I have to get it together. I have to work with her all day. And I'm literally <laughs> like. I didn't expect to have that emotional response, but yeah. like you said, like you go back to, yep. it, she was my first hero, right? Yeah. I didn't get, I didn't get to see Another that cool very often. Very up. Absolutely. Yeah. And you know, that's the kind of the cool thing about sci-fi that I'm not sure that, that gets lost in the translation a little bit is sci-fi has always pushed the boundaries of social socially acceptable stuff like star trek yeah was one of the first shows ever on tv with a with a multicultural class yeah Fast. you know what i mean you know for captain kirk to to kiss a black girl or to kiss a green alien girl or something was you know, that was not right. that was no small thing you know they were really kind of pushing the boundaries of, of what was socially acceptable back then. And again, with strong female leads, you know, and I mean, strong female leads in the past, you know, in the movies, I think Hollywood always kind of tried to, you know, push women to the front, but they usually still were in the, 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 the regular kind of world of a woman. You know what I mean? Yeah. Sci-fi gave, you know, just, because it is fantasy, of course, was able to kind of ignore all of that stuff, traditional roles and and, and whatnot, and and push the boundaries. And, and to me, anyway, that's a that's a pretty that's a pretty cool thing, you know. I agree. I mean, I think it's part of the reason that I was so drawn to so much sci-fi. I mean, even you got into the '90s and 2000s, and people were like, "You're." you're watching a show called Buffy the Vampire Slayer. And I'm like, listen, you don't even understand. Like, you know, these kind of, these kind of roles don't happen. These are, you know, strong women and they're being represented in a way that you're not seeing. So I, 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 I love the fact that we're having this conversation. I didn't know, I didn't know I was going to talk to one of my nerds. Like, I hope it's okay (laughs) that I call you that. It's the, it's the biggest compliment I can give you. You're one of my people. Let's talk a little bit about, I mean, what, what we're here for. We're here to talk about PopCon July 9th through the 11th. And the fact that, you know, that you and Richie are coming and you'll be representing the Ramones and yeah, Talking about that moment, you know, that that people go back to when they hear a song. I mean, the Ramones take people back to those moments in their lives. I mean, so iconic. Can you talk a little bit what it was like for you to join, you know, the band once it was established? And because you were a fan of the band first, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah. In fact, after I got into the band and, you know, I was... It, it was very awkward, first off, mm-hmm. super duper awkward to to have been a fan and then suddenly, you know, be taking orders from and, you know, getting yelled at by and, you know, guys that I kind of grew up idolizing. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, but once I was in and 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 kind of real, you know, kind of found my place and everything, I was talking with Johnny one day and I told him the, uh, the story about Johnny's the way he judged everybody was uh, when you said you were a fan, he would ask you how many shows you saw. That was wow. really good. So if you said, you know, I, I've seen 10 shows, you go, oh, okay, you're a fan, you know? So, so me and Johnny were talking and, and, and I, I said, you know, I got to tell you about the first time I ever heard the Ramones. I said, I, you know, it's sometime late seventies, maybe. I mean, I'm probably nine, 10, 10, 11 years old. So what are we talking, 78, 79, something like that, even earlier maybe. So I lived kind of rural, Long mm-hmm. Island, New York, and there was several acres of woods behind my house. And in these woods was an old, burnt-down Victorian house. It was the whole 
the whole area had belonged to this one person. They had this giant mansion kind of place. It burnt down to the ground. So I used to go back there by myself in these woods and I would dig through the rubble and I found like coins from the 1800s and like, uh, I found like a potter, a piece of pottery that was, you know, made in China, like going way back and stuff. So I, I used to go back there and find all the stuff. So I was back there one day and, and I, I hear these two girls talking, walking up the trail. So they come over and they're like, Hey, what's up? And I'm talking with them. And it was, you know, the one girl, her name was Christine, long blonde hair, bell bottom jeans, two top, like the seventies, boom, my style. So, so I, you know, I was talking with them. So she's like, Oh, you know, you should come over to my house. And I was like, yeah, okay. So we walked back to her house, which was not close. It probably took us the better part of an hour to get there. And um, we go to her house and we go downstairs to her room. You are dedicated. <laughs> oh, yeah. oh yeah. Girl in the tube top and bell bottoms. <laughs> yeah. So I, so we go back to her house and she puts on a record and turns around and holds up the cover and she goes, you ever hear of the Ramones? And I, I was like, you know, in the opening song, Blitzkrieg Bop on the record and <gasps> boom. And that was it. So here I am in this, you know, gorgeous girl's room and yeah. come on. And she sits down on the bed and puts the, the, the album cover in her lap and starts breaking up some weed and rolls a joint. And, <laughs> you know, so. so yeah. So when you are playing Blitz, uh, Blitzkrieg Bop, does that play in your head like that? You go back to the moment with the girl in the tube top? <laughs> I would fight that off because my wife would have a fit <laughs> if I admitted to that. But it was funny because in that day, I heard the Ramones for the first time. I kissed a girl for the first time and I smoked for the first time. So wow. it was like, <laughs> the one the first in, in one day. So I told Johnny that story and he was like, okay. That's a good story. You know, he's like, all right, that's acceptable. <laughs> but yeah, so, you know, so now by the time I get into the band, you know, it's, I'm, I'm a huge fan, you know, I'm, I'm just really excited to be there. And I just tried to, you know, Dee Dee was always my favorite in the band, of course. And uh, while I knew I, I could never replace Dee Dee, he, it, Dee Dee is to me the, the kind of the, the, uh, that's where he, Dee, Punk rock, as we know it right now, really starts with Dee Dee. Dee Dee is a guy. You know what I mean? The songs, everything, the look, Dee Dee is a guy. So Wow, and you had to fill those shoes. Well, that had I, to be scary. See, that's the thing. I, the, only, uh, the only way for me to be able to do it was to not ever compare myself or try to fill Dee Dee's shoes. And I just looked at it as I got hired to do a job. I'm going to do it the absolute best that I possibly can. And that's it. And that's, you know, that's how I'm going to go at it. I, there was no way I could, you know, try to take Dee Dee's place. I mean, when, when Dee Dee announced he was leaving the band, right, I was riding with a friend of mine in his truck and it came over the radio on a Long Island radio station. And Dee Dee Ramon announced today that he's leaving the Ramones. He's trying to get sober and being in the band is not conducive to a sober lifestyle. Blah, 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 blah. And I turned to my buddy and I said, I'll never go see the Ramones again. It's wow. not, it's not the Ramones or that Didi, you know, of course I was completely wrong and went to every show they ever did ever again. But, but yeah, so the only way for me to be able to do it and not feel completely intimidated was just by looking at it like that. I got hired to do this job. I'm going to do it the best I absolutely can. And, and, and that's how I went at it. And, you know, like I saw the Ramones back in the day when they were unbelievable live. And the last couple of times I saw them with Dee, Dee they were t terrible. I mean, oh, really? Well, they, you know, they were not feeling it anymore. Yeah. Well, you know, Dee Dee, uh, Dee Dee was really giving the band a lot of problems with drugs and alcohol. There was a lot of substance abuse problems within the band, period. You know, there was the long known about feud between Johnny and Joey over, you know, over Linda, who became Johnny's wife. It, you know, it would just, it was not a, uh, uh, there was not a good relationship between the band members and the camp. So I come along and I'm like, you know, 
like just a goofy kid, you know, like, Hey, this is going to be great. And blah, blah, and this and that. And I, I just tried to make it as fun as I possibly could take some of the stress off of Johnny and Joey by being as animated as I could on stage, which actually served to make them more animated, which was, you know, which worked out good. So there were certain things I knew I could do to, to make the band better live. And that, and I really went at that hard. I really did. And it wasn't difficult for me because I was just so <laughs> exploding with, with, you know, unbelievable happiness uh, of, of being in a band, being able to make a living doing music one, but being in a band that I grew up idolizing, it really was just the icing on the cake. So when I got up there, I just totally cut loose, like totally, like I would lose my mind. You can see pictures of me on stage where you could tell I'm not present, like, Mm-hmm. You know, close up picture, you could see in my eyes that I am not present. You know what I mean? Like, I am definitely in, like, altered state of consciousness. <laughs> like, that's really the way it was for a very long time with the band, too. You know, just, just looking over and see, to my right and seeing Joey there and, and Johnny next to him, you know, I, I, I look over and I'd be like, how the heck did I get here? How did this even happen, you know? Yeah. what a, I mean, what a, a cool experience and the fact that you are sitting here talking about it in a way of knowing all of the issues that were going on, the relationship issues, the substance abuse and things like that. But you still were able to say, but how all of that aside, like, let me take this moment and stare at my idols and me on stage with them. Right. (laughs) Just Really. And and just a very unique experience. You know, I, I know there was, you know, there was a movie made a while back. I can't remember the name of it but it was you know about a guy who gets the gig singing for a big famous band Mm -hmm. and how he sees behind you know he gets to see behind the curtain and how different it is from what his you know what his expectations were and there was definitely a lot of that but I mean you know my experience was 100% positive I mean it was just you know, it's like everything else, you know, it, ha- it has it, it had its rough points, but you have to, you know, the thing you have to keep in mind is, is I did not come from, I did, I didn't, I wasn't coming from a, an easy life before that. I was in the Marine Corps. You know what I mean? I grew up on the island. I worked in factories, you know, I, my, when I was a kid, my family did not have a lot of money. You know what I mean? I, I grew up yeah. without, without, without a lot of stuff. So my experience in it, I was so much more appreciative than, than, you know, some of the other, the other people that have, you know, had opportunities similar to mine and, and whatnot, you know, and, and because I had already been through so much, I, I think I just never really developed like the rock star kind of attitude or, or, or I never developed that point of view. Like I never was like, you know, just felt like I deserved it or anything like that. I felt like I worked hard for it. You know, I yeah. did everything I had to do and I, and I, and I got it. Yeah. I think it's a, a different perspective when you come from that. I, yeah. uh, similar, you know, came from very uh, humble beginnings and a, a giant family that lived on a farm and we were Catholic and we didn't really have very much other than the farm. And, and so it's like every moment that, that I have in this life that I have now, I mean, <laughs> I mean, CJ getting to talk with you, you know, when they're like, you know, Howard contacted me and was like, would you like to talk to CJ before he comes to PopCon? I'm like, I get to talk to CJ Ramon. I mean, (laughs) yes. So thank you. And I know that we have, you know, so many fans here at PopCon that are one excited just to, you know, to get back to that experience again. But for you, what is the, the, the convention experience? coming up and sharing their stories about how the Ramones played such an important role in their life. Yeah. You know, I I really do enjoy kind of the face to face stuff. I I do. I'm really accessible though, like on, on social media and Mm -hmm. stuff. I don't have a social media person. I don't have a, you know, manager who runs my, you know, my Instagram, my Facebook and stuff. It's all me. So when people, you know, direct message me or when they message me on one of my posts, I message them back right away, you know, but it's kind of cool to hear people talk about how much the Ramones mean to them. And even after all these years, you know, of hearing at this point, you know, thousands and thousands and thousands of story, I can still relate 
to how these people feel because that's exactly how I felt when I got into the band, you know. I just wanted to, like, you know, ask Joey and Johnny a million questions, you know. There were so many things I wanted to ask them. But I realized if I was quiet and sat back that they would tell me about most of the, I would hear it from most, you know, most of the stories I wanted to anyway. And I would make myself less of an annoying, like, where are we going, George? You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> right. <laughs> you know, like, be a little bit less the goofy kid and a little bit uh, more patient. But, yeah, it's it, it, the, the convention's great. It's just funny to be on the other side of the table because, you know, I went to – I went to conventions with Johnny, you know, when I was in the band, but I had been to con- to conventions even before. Funny enough, the last, I think it was at, it might have been New Jersey HorrorCon. I think that's where it was. So um, one of the last ones I did, like I said before, I'm, I was a huge, I like, ha- I like the Hammer films. When I was working on my album called American Beauty, I was having trouble getting inspired to write songs. So I I went online, I pulled up Dracula AD. Nice. Dracula AD, 72 AD, whatever it's called. And I started watching it. And Carolyn Monroe is in that movie. And I, since I saw the gold, I think it was the Golden Voyage of Sinbad with her in it, I was just completely infatuated, right? And then, of course, she did the Bond movies. and. Mm-hmm. I mean, so I wrote a song on that record called Girlfriend in the Graveyard about about Carolyn Monroe. Uh, I did New Jersey Horicon. I want to say it was 2018. And she was there. Oh, my gosh. And so my agent, Howard, I think he went over and talked to talked to her and told her the story. She came over to my table. And I was just beside myself. Like, I didn't know what to do. I was like, like a, like a teenager, you know? Yeah. So, um, you know, she signed a picture for me uh, and we took a photo together and I, I, you know, I gave her a copy of the record and well, I ended up becoming friends with her. Wow. And so I, I, I went over to London twice mm-hmm. just after that. And she actually came out to one of the shows with her her daughter and and uh, a couple of other folks, and it was just it was just the coolest thing, you know what I mean? It was I like bet. it was a, a connection to my my you know my childhood, my early years that you know almost nothing else could have kind of like brought all that stuff together, and just a very cool lady, a very very cool lady. I mean, great sense of humor great conversationalist, you know, always the kind of person like she a- asks you questions and mm-hmm. lets you know that she's really paying attention. You know what I mean? That yes. you really have her undivided attention and, but really a sweetheart of a gal. And, and uh, it, 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 you know, I, and wow. conventions, you know what I mean? <laughs> right? Yes. Such a like unique opportunity to like meet people and, and granted, you know, of course, you know, it, it, you, it's hard to separate the person from the role. You know yes. what I mean? Like, it's hard to like, you know, imagine like, oh no, they can't, you know, they, they can't fly. They're not really, that's, you know yeah, what I mean? That's you not really who they are. <laughs> you, you never unsuspend reality, you know, because when you go and see a movie, you have to suspend reality, right? To, to yep. really be able to get into the movie. So you meet these people sometimes and it's hard to just let go of all of that and meet the person and be like, Hey, how's it going? You know, but, but it's cool. Yeah. I, I, I actually met Adrian at one of the conventions, which was huge, you know, yes. just another very, very cool lady. And just, I mean, I was, I was like, wow, you know, and, and I forget that I'm almost meeting them as um, peer that almost like my peers, you know what I yeah. mean? We work in the entertainment industry, you know what I mean? But, you know, I'm not really not their peers. They're like classic act, you know, act right. and, and, but even still, I forget like, yeah, I'm not meeting them as like a fan to, you know, to perform a thing. It's kind of like a performer to perform a thing. But even still, I just fanboy out big time. It, it doesn't, it, it never changes, right? I yeah. started doing this and I was like, I got to you know, I'll have it together after I get the hang of this. And then, yep. like you said, you know, 
the, the day Carrie Fisher walked in the room, I was like, I got nothing. I, I can't keep this yeah. together at all. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, Star Wars, to me, realistically, kind of kicked off the what I would consider like, you know, like 50s, 60s really was the, the first wave of science fiction, horror stuff, you know. But I think mm-hmm. Star Wars as a film kicked off the next generation of of kids that were really really into science fiction i think yeah. it, you know the 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 special effects the storyline the characters everything i think it really kind of really kind of the young people could really relate to it i yeah. that's the best way for me to explain it like it came out at a time when people were like you know because you have you know yeah you know, you have movies like Close Encounters of the Third Kind, right? Mm-hmm. Genius, unbelievably great movie. You know what I mean? Absolutely. I, I, I love the movie. I love everything about it. I love the whole storyline, you know, the Devil's Tower thing and everything. It's it's yeah. so, 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 so cool. But Star Wars is just, was just so far outside the box. You know Yeah. I mean? It was, yeah. really, really was. And I think it came out at the right time. And I mean, that was, that was it. It really kicked off like a whole new generation. I mean, to, to, you know, I don't think that many fans of a movie had dressed up as characters since Rocky Horror Picture Show came out. I think Rocky yeah. Horror Picture Show was probably the last movie that came out <laughs> where people got dressed up in character. But Star Wars kicked that off for the, the more mainstream audience, you know? You bet it did. I mean, even when, and you, you know, we could have a whole conversation about, you know, wh- the prequels and whether or not people should watch them. But yeah. wh- I mean, when the first prequel came out, I was at a movie theater at the midnight showing dressed as Princess Leia and I couldn't no, yeah. up here. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and that was like... You know, it, it really, it's kind of, to me anyway, I, I, it's really kind of cool to give people a vehicle to stretch their imaginations. You know what I mean? To kind of like put their passion into something creative. You know what I mean? It really, it just checks off so many boxes for a great experience. You know what I mean? And a unique one too, you know? And of course that led to, I mean, now you go to conventions and you the some of the makeup and and costumes and stuff that people do on their own is just incredible. It's not even, you know, this isn't even like, you know, fan stuff. This is like really, really good, well put together, creative stuff, you know. I Yes. Yeah, I, it's amazing. And I'll tell you CJ coming to to PopCon cuz I have you know, traveled a, a, around the world working cons. And yeah. I don't mean to brag about my hometown con, but brag, wait, brag. wait until you see the cosplay at PopCon. These oh, people yeah. bring it. The, the ultimate cosplay championship is Saturday night, and it is one of the best cosplay All representations. Right. So, I'll have to make sure I'm there. Yeah, so it sounds like I'm so excited to hear that not only are you going to be, you know, coming as a as a guest of PopCon and meeting the fans, but you're going to get to sort of immerse yourself. Oh, I in, love it. In the I, love experience. it. I really do. I really enjoy it. Fantastic. Well, I can't wait to meet you in person. And I appreciate so much you taking this time this afternoon to to chat with me. If you haven't got your tickets yet, go to popcon.us and we will see you on July 9th, July 9th through the 11th at the Indiana Convention Center. Yeah. Oh my gosh, that was awesome. Thank you so much, CJ. Thank you. That was fun. Yeah, I will. I'll definitely be looking for you when we get there. We're actually- Definitely. We're um we're doing our paranormal show live on Friday night at PopCon. So that's cool. If you're if you're into that kind of stuff, it's I gonna love be that stuff. what the, so what's the what's the show entail? What's paranormal? The show is called Paranormal Crossroad, and we actually we're an all female t- uh, cast and crew, and it, we go into people's homes. We've been to a few workplaces, but mostly it's homes, and it's yeah. helping people really talk to the spirits that are there and help them find peace and coexist. And are you on, um, is it on TV? Is it a televised? So right now it's local TV, but we've got my, my partner, 
uh, has three seasons of a show called Oddity Files on Amazon Prime. She was the the lead in that. And she asked me, I actually met her at a convention about six years ago. And so it's all like my convention life. It's all always so crazy. But she asked me to be a part of this show just because I, I'm, I'm, I've never done anything like this, but I've been a media personality here uh, yeah. in Indy for 20 years. And, you know, I, I was like, I'm, I'm happy to be a part of this. And yeah. I'm telling you that like, I sit back and I'm like, I can't even believe that this, that what we're getting. I can't I'm, believe. I, this- I believe all, I'm so into that stuff. I, oh, I cool. really, really enjoy it. Yeah. I, Good. Well, yeah. if you, th- if you uh, want to come, let me know. I'll, I'll send the information to Howard. We would, we'd love to have you with us. Well, it's our first time doing the the show live. So we're going to show the investigation part. And then we're going to have our friend who is a incredible spirit medium. She comes out and kind of confirms and just, she knows nothing about what we did. And she comes out and talks to the spirits that we talk to and confirms everything. It's wow. It's, it's incredible. It's Ooh. honestly, it's an, it's an honor to be a part of it because that we're, you know, all we're doing is being this sort of connection for people who need, you know, some peace and, yeah. and some closure. So yeah. cool. It's, well, it's wild. I, I'm cause I've had a couple of experiences myself. So I, I I, okay. I, I've always kind of been, I've always kind of been like interested in it, even from when I was a kid. Ah, well, that's like a whole conversation. We should talk. I would love to hear your experiences at PopCon. Okay. And, you know, maybe we'll have our equipment and stuff with us. So maybe uh, if oh, we, cool. if All we've right. got some time that works, we'll, we'll, we'll pull out our spirit box and sure. all our little toys and see if we can uh, get some messages for you. I would love to. That'd be great. Well, I guess we'll be seeing you here in in about three weeks. And again, it was a a real pleasure to to chat with you. Thank you, CJ. I really appreciate it. See you in a couple of weeks. Ooh, how cool was that? (laughs) He's one of us, a huge nerd. I love it. It's going to be so much fun having CJ Ramon from the Ramones at PopCon with us July 9th through the 11th. Uh, I would love to have you in the studio audience for our show, Paranormal Crossroad, live on July 9th at 7 o'clock. I had stopped recording, uh, and I wish I hadn't, because CJ and I talked about some paranormal stuff after uh, I had hit the stop button. And he's actually got some stories he wants to share. So I'm going to see if we could get him on a panel with us, uh, maybe chit chat and and see what kind of paranormal stuff CJ Ramon has had going on. Uh, so get your tickets to PopCon. You can get photo ops with CJ and over 25 celebrities. And you can get your tickets not only to Paranormal Crossroad Live on Friday night, but I Highly recommend you get the ticket to Messages from Spirit, a gallery reading with Tiffany Rice, which will follow the Paranormal Crossroad uh, TV show taping. You can find out more, join us at PopCon, get your tickets, celebrate being a nerd, celebrate all the paranormal stuff that's going to happen along the way. Uh, And thank you so much for supporting the kind of nerdy girls as we are excited to be supporting PopCon. Popcon Popcon.us, get your tickets. The Kind of Nerdy Girls are proud to be a part of the Just What I Needed network, and we certainly hope we were just what you needed. To support the show, you can get yourself some merch and show off that you are kind of nerdy. Go to kindofnerdygirls.com and click on the Kind of Nerdy shop. And while you're there, you can also support the show by getting access to behind-the-scenes footage, videos of our podcast, and never-before-heard episodes from our our classic kind of nerdy vault. Just become a patron at kindofnerdygirls.com.